guys this is a section on the benzodiazepines which is a sub classification of the sedatives and hypnotics so speaking about the benzodiazepines these have the benzene ring fused to a seven member diazepine ring so as the name suggests benzo is the structure benzene and diazepine is a ring structure which has the seven rings present in it so what is the main site of action it mainly acts on the midbrain and limbic system and brain stem these are the three main site of actions of the benzodiazepine looking into the mechanism of action benzodiazepines these facilitates the action of gaba as they potentiate the inhibitory effects of gaba so to understand in a easy way imagine this is a receptor site and usually here uh, the gaba receptors come and gets attached the gaba receptors what are these gaba receptors these are the inhibitory neuronal receptors inhibitory neurotransmitters present and on the other side we can see there is the benzodiazepines benzodiazepines you can also take it as barbiturates and also the non benzodiazepine groups okay so here you have gaba and here you have benzodiazepines in the absence of benzodiazepines okay imagine there is no benzodiazepines or all these things there it's not there only gaba is there so here we have the chloride ions so we normally have the chloride ions what happens they will come from the extracellular to intracellular okay this is extracellular side and this is intracellular side okay so what happens the chloride normally they'll come from extracellular to intracellular with the potassium moving from intracellular to extracellular so this is not the point we need only chloride ion okay chloride is a anion so it comes from extracellular to intracellular so here there will be accumulation of chloride which is normal and does lead to hypopolarization up to a normal extent okay when we have this benzodiazepines what happens is there will be increase in the chloride concentration intracellular what happens when there is increase in the chloride concentration increase in the opening of the chloride channels there will be increase in the chloride conduction intracellular which leads to the cns depression so that's the main mechanism okay now we'll see the sentence benzodiazepines they will bind to the specific site on the gaba a receptors it's not the gaba binding site gaba binding site is this one so it's binding to other site other than gaba site it uh, consider it as gaba a receptor site okay now benzodiazepine has bind it to that site what happens there will be increase in the chloride influx increase in the frequency of opening of the chloride channels increase in the gaba mediated chloride current there will be increase in the chloride conduction there will be increase in the chloride conduction and leads to membranal hypopolarization what membranal hypopolarization neuronal membranal hyperpolarization increases normally also it occurs but it is more than that of the normal and finally leads to cns depression because there is decrease in the synaptic transmission so that's the main mechanism it is the general mechanism for all you may consider it as benzodiazepines or the non benzodiazepines or it might be barbiturates barbituric acid or the melatonin it might be anything of the sedatives and hypnotics the mechanism remains the same for all you have to just change the names if it's benzodiazepine keep it as benzodiazepines or barbiturates as barbiturates that's it now speaking about the actions of the benzodiazepines okay 
first action is it reduces the anti anxiety so it, it, it reduces the anxiety therefore it's known as anti anxiety drug it's also called as anti convulsant drug anti epileptic drug or the muscle relaxant drug for these it's mainly used benzodiazepine is known as the drug of 3 remember this anti convulsant it's also known as the anti anxiety drug and also the skeletal muscle relaxant these three it's the main main action of the benzodiazepine remember this okay so what does it do it mainly tries to reduce the anxiety what is anxiety anxiety is unnecessary feeling of fear actually there is no necessary of uh, getting that fear fear is just a feeling so unnecessary feeling of this fear is known as anxiety it acts on the alpha 2 receptors of the limbic system so this benzodiazepine mainly acts on the alpha 2 receptors of the brain of the limbic system but the adverse effect as we know when you use the drug for a longer period of time mainly the sedatives or hypnotics uh, like you extend it for more than 3 to 4 days it causes the dependence like you can't live without the drug you just need the drug at any cost it causes you tolerance which is a very bad and it might cause severe reactions to your body second one is it causes sedation and hypnotics as we have discussed the same thing alpha it acts on alpha 1 receptors of the gaba example the diazepam it's a kind of uh, benzodiazepines which has uh, which gives usually the less time to sleep like the duration you get sleep get into the sleep will be decreased it shortens the nrem stages but stage 2 is usually prolonged that is the rapid eye movement like the <clears throat> eye movement which you do is usually prolonged it reduces the night awake getting up again and again night is usually not good so it gives you a long deep sleep it provides your refreshing sleep it has no enzyme inducing property and it decreases your hangover effect it gives you a normal natural sleep it has a wide therapeutic index it decreases the tolerance dependence and respiratory depression this obeys only up when you take the drug in the normal dose if you take it in high dose obviously it will lead to increase in the tolerance increase in the dependence and might cause you the adverse drug reactions also so you shouldn't use the drug for a long term because it causes tolerance dependence and hangover effects the third property or the third action is it's mainly used in amnesia so amnesia is a condition where you are not being able to recollect the things whatever has happened so uh, you not being able to re- uh, recollect or remember the things it mainly acts on the alpha receptors of the gaba uh, it has a short term memory loss insomnia it reduces all these things the benzodiazepines the fourth one is as i've said the three property this is the one where it's mainly used as the muscle relaxant relaxant and it mainly acts on the beta 2 receptors of the gaba a and it relieves all the muscle spasm and the contraction and it will try to uh, reduce the injury and strain in the area it's used as anti convulsant mainly in the presynaptic inhibition for the epilepsy also it can be used it's used in the endoscopy and diagnosis of the procedures it's used to treat the alcohol withdrawal syndrome Okay, so mechanism of action as already have discussed, benzodiazepines they bind to the specific receptor of GABA, increases the opening of potassium, ch- sorry, uh, chloride channels, increases the chloride conduction and the neuronal membrane hypopolarization, decreases the synaptic transmission and causes CNS depression. Okay, now to remember the action, there is a mnemonic that is acdiazepam. Okay, so what is a these are the actions of the benzodiazepines okay first is a what is a that is alcohol withdrawal syndrome second one is c c is conscious sedation it gives you a sedation and hypnotic feeling third one is d 
D is the diagnostic and minor operative procedures also you can use benzodiazepines like the diazepams and lorazepams. Then I stands for insomnia that is uh, sleeplessness. It gives a solution for the sleeplessness. Z E Z E you can pronounce it as Z G G. So G is it's also used in general anesthesia. P is it's also used in pre-anesthetic medication. Sorry, I forgot the A. So A is we can use it as anticonvulsant property. These three we generally know anticonvulsant, uh, anxiety, and muscle relaxant. A again it's anti uh, anxiety and M is muscle relaxant. These three we generally know. Uh, the three main properties muscle relaxant and ang uh, anxiety and anticonvulsant so according to mnemonic i just repeat it once again a is alcohol withdrawal syndrome uh, c is conscious sedation d is diagnostic and minor operative procedures i is insomnia it's used as a anticonvulsant it's used in the pre-anesthetic medications it's also used in anxiety and it's also used as muscle relaxant to decrease the spasm and spinal injury and the contractions of your muscle next moving on to pharmacokinetics of the benzodiazepines these are usually given orally or intravenously and occasionally by the rectal route also for the children mainly the rate of absorption following the oral administration is variable and these are not generally given through im because uh, it's rarely used because of the uh, absorption is very slow it's like damn slow so you usually don't prefer intramuscular route you mainly prefer the oral or the iv you can for children mainly we use the rectal route of the diazepam tablets yeah so they mainly have the larger volume of distribution they have a shorter duration of action also and uh, yeah they have shorter duration of action and they are mainly uh, metabolized in the liver just remember two to three points that's enough so they are mainly metabolized in the liver and some may also undergo enterohepatic recycling and uh, they also produce active metabolites which has a longer half-life and cumulation may also be seen oxycipam is not significantly metabolized in liver the metabolites as we know they are usually excreted through urine and remember this point this is a very important these benzodiazepines they can easily cross through the placental barrier yeah so these are the main pharmacokinetic effects of the benzodiazepine next is moving on to the adverse effects so benzodiazepines they have a wide margin of safety they are generally well tolerated they usually have the less side effects they mainly cause the drowsiness confusion this is same for all the tablets generally they cause nausea vomiting blood vision amnesia is like the forgetfulness you forget the things you don't remember whatever has happened disorientation tolerance and drug dependence uh, it also might cause uh, tremor, insomnia, restlessness, nervousness, loss of appetite, etc. So remember this point. So use of benzodiazepines during the labor may cause respiratory depression or hypotonia in the newborn, which is called as floppy baby syndrome. Why? That's what I have said. Remember this point. It's a very important point because these benzodiazepines they can cross through the placental barrier, and therefore they might cause the adverse effect instead of uh, you know like the adverse effect seen on the uh, mother. The adverse effect can also be noticed in the child inside the womb. It might cause the respiratory depression, hypotonia, the loss of the body tone of the bo uh, baby. And uh, it's also called as the floppy baby syndrome. It's like it won't be having any balance. Okay, no posture. It will be like lost all the toning of the body. It also might cause convulsions and anxiety. These drugs also might show the paradoxical effect. Remember any 3 to 4, that's enough. Drowsiness, confusion. Remember this point that is benzodiazepine. It can cross the placental barrier. Therefore, it causes the floppy baby syndrome. 
okay next what are the important features of the benzodiazepines remember only two names that's more than enough so it's agonist and antagonist mainly remember the antagonist at least yeah so benzodiazepine antagonist is fumanazil remember this word it's very important they usually ask it for your viva questions so the antagonist of benzodiazepine is um, Flumanazil and uh, inverse agonist is beta carbolin. Remember the flumanazil at least. Okay. Next, the two classification of the benzodiazepines. They usually ask this diazepam question. It's like their favorite question. They usually ask it for a longer times. Like many times they have asked. So diazepam, as we know. Its root is mainly intravenous, oral, rectal in children. It's usually given 5 to 10 mg in quantity. It's one of the oldest benzodiazepines used till now. It's used in the anxiety, hypnotic, anesthesia, in the emergency conditions such as seizures, epilepsy, convulsions. It's used as a muscle relaxant and uh, the pre-medications, all the three what have said and add some uh, it's used in the pre-medications and general anesthesia, etc. Thing is, diazepam usually have the rapid onset of action and therefore it's used for the patient who usually suffer uh, with difficulty in sleeping or sleep maintenance. They won't be able to sleep at a particular time. One day if they sleep in the morning, they might sleep in the afternoon, the next day and the other next day they might sleep it in the mid soon. So they have to like to maintain their sleep maintenance we can usually prefer this diazepam benzodiazepine drug they also have the withdrawal syndrome but it's up to a mild extent it's not like to high extent that it might cause the drug dependence and tolerance it can be maintained it decreases the insomnia and it's rapidly absorbed in the git gut it produces the active metabolites and it helps in controlling the convulsions and it has a shorter period of action therefore it develops the tolerance like yeah that's what i have said no so like if it is extending for a longer period of time then the tolerance will be more the dependence will be more so therefore this has a shorter duration of action and the tolerance probability will be very very less in fact negligible so they can also be taken before food and after food there is no restriction like no you have to take before food or after food the stomach shouldn't be empty or fully filled you can take it in any time there is no time restrictions withdrawal of alcohol it is also used in withdrawal of alcohol as we have said it's one of the main property of the benzodiazepines it's also used in the spinal injury tetanus and local muscle spam or skeletal muscle contraction what are these adverse effects as we have spoken about it it has causes sedation sleeping hypnotism it might cause dependence only and only when you take it in excessive quantity like three to four tablets like you get so much addicted only then it causes dependence or else if you take one or two tablets it usually doesn't cause tolerance that easy for this tablet especially for this tablet diazepa it causes amnesia you know what is amnesia that's what it's like you won't be able to recollect or remember the things whatever has happened next is fluorazepam the second drug diazepam is done second one is fluorazepam so diazepam we have already finished the definition root and it's one of the oldest benzodiazepines adverse effect uses etc fluorazepam the next important drug root as you know it's oral and it's usually given in 15 mg it's not like only oral you can also try to give it through the rectal for kids and the iv is also possible but im is not possible because it has lower absorption compared to all the others it's mainly used in, in insomnia and it has less side effects compared to the other drug mainly also the diazepam it has less side effects it produces the active metabolism because it has a longer t half it has a longer half life it causes accumulation also accumulation is like addicting that's what so if you compare to diazepam this causes addicting whereas diazepam doesn't cause addicting like within that time within three to four days but this causes addiction faster on the daily ingestion so you shouldn't take it regularly like every day it shouldn't be like you are getting addicted to it you are getting dependent on it so you have to give some gap and you shouldn't ingest it every day for those uh, only for those who have this nocturnal awakeness so nocturnal awakeness is like they sleep in the morning and they get up at night 
so for them they usually prescribe this for this patient and it's not usually prescribed for the old people or elderly ones only for those who have the problem in sleeping in the night and who sleep whole day along what is the adverse effect adverse effect is that what it causes sedation sleep it causes ataxia that is you lose your body balance and the third one is the mental confusion it works by slowing your brain activity what does it do it will decrease our brain activity and therefore which causes the brain depression because there is decrease in the release of the neurotransmitters and induce sleep so that's it about the classification we have spoken about the whole benzodiazepine topics its classification uh, its two main important example diazepine and fluorazepine and it's they usually ask the fluorazepine for 3 marks and the diazepine for 5 marks question and the whole benzodiazepine with its classification and the uh, pharmacological action as i've said the uh, mnemonic that is ac diazepam z you can consider it as g which is mainly preferred for general anesthesia so this also they usually ask for 5 to 3 marks this is a very important topic sedative and hypnotics so that's the last part we have already completed the barbiturates and the non benzodiazepines so we are done with the first chapter sedatives and hypnotics that's it about this video so hope you like this video please do like share comment and subscribe thank you